My name is Rama, and I would like to talk to you about Tantric Buddhism. What is Buddhism? Buddhism is a code of ethics, a set of meditation methods of making the mind calm and quiet. There are a lot of different types of Buddhism, and the essence of all of them is meditation. Some forms of Buddhism emphasize reincarnation, uh, where you're going to get to in your next life or future lives. Some discuss conservation of energy. Some types of Buddhism have to do with visualizations, very complex visualizations, where you will imagine certain things in your mind and learn to hold them perfectly. Uh, some involve ritual, devotion to teachers, devotion to ideals, no devotion at all. There is a lot of flavors of Buddhism. There is one form of Buddhism that is the graduate school of Buddhism, and that's what I'd like to talk to you about. I'd like to start you at the top. We're up in the Himalayas today, and I'd like to talk to you about Tantric Buddhism, Tibetan Tantric Buddhism, or Vajrayana Buddhism, which is very similar to Zen Buddhism. It is the essence of practice. The essence of Buddhism, the essence of practice, is that there is nirvana. And nirvana is not far away. Now, there are some forms of Buddhism, and I respect them all. I have to tell you, I respect them all. But there are some forms of Buddhism where they tell you, yes, Virginia, there is a Santa Claus. When you're a kid, I think it's good to believe in Santa Claus. I like believing in Santa Claus. But when we grow up, we find out that maybe there isn't a Santa Claus. Does that mean that we shouldn't have a belief in Santa Claus when we're a kid? No, kids need Santa Claus. It's nice. But then we grow up, and maybe we get to play Santa Claus and give somebody a present. So with Buddhism, essentially what we're doing is we are growing up. We are growing up with Santa Claus to start with. Santa Claus is a temple. Santa Claus is a specific way to meditate, always the same way. Santa Claus is believing that just because you shave your head and put on an ochre robe, that you are somehow holy, and somehow maybe even holier than the person who's hanging out in jeans with curly hair. That, that's Santa Claus. It's good. In the beginning, you really need, for many people, to have those formations, those aggregates, you need something that you can say, this is different than what I've done, and if I do this, I, it, it convinces my body and my mind and my spirit that I'm starting a new life, because I don't like my old life. I want something better. Tantric Bud Buddhism, however, is different. In Tantric Buddhism, we do not believe in Santa Claus. We believe that Nirvana is here now. Nirvana is not separate. It's not some place you're going to go to in another life. It's not some uh, state of exalted consciousness that only a few people get to. As a matter of fact, we believe that everything is holy, that everything is nirvana. In many forms of Buddhism, they tell you not to have sex. They tell you not to do this, not to do that, not to do the other thing. It's hard to figure out what they're telling you to do because there's so many things not to do. In Tantric Buddhism, we have serious respect for that because we feel that some people need those codified belief systems. These are building blocks that help them gradually gain control over their energy, their life, their mind, develop mental power, the flow of kundalini energy, and bring them into higher states of mind. But eventually, these things can become limitations. Eventually, it's necessary, in a way, for us to look around at the panorama of life and realize that while these might have been fine ways for us to start, these might have been very good practices in the beginning, that we have to go beyond them. We have to go to something higher, something deeper, something perhaps more subtle. And that is to realize that there is no sin. To realize that there is no Santa Claus. To realize that there's no devil to realize in a way that there's no God or that everything is God. To not quite be so simplistic in our view of reality. Putting on an ochre robe and shaving your head is a step. It's 
It's kind of like getting a college diploma. What is it? It's a piece of paper. Maybe it makes you feel better about yourself. Maybe it's a, a certificate of accomplishment. Maybe it's not. Maybe you faked your way through school. The real measurement in tantric Buddhist practice is obviously how long you can stop your thought and how well you can meditate. But the real measurement is how do you treat the people around you when no one else is watching? How do you treat yourself? Do you have a sense of reverence for life? Not just when other people are watching. Do you think there's something wrong with sex? You know, you wouldn't be here without it. I don't know if that's good or bad. There's nothing wrong with sex. And someone who thinks there's something wrong with sex, I think is a little hung up. As hung up as someone who thinks that that's all that is important. Tantric Buddhism says that in all energy, in all life, in all situations, enlightenment exists. But you have to be able to meditate very, very well to see that. At the same time, there's a tremendous respect for people who aren't at that point yet, who need to believe in Santa Claus. We believe there's a gradual pathway to enlightenment, and there's the Concord, you know, the, the fast jet. There's the way to get there very rapidly, to suddenly just be in the center of all things. It's up to you which you take. One is not better than another. But I'm a teacher of Tantric Buddhism. I believe in total immersion for people who it's right for to learn to meditate. And so today I'm going to teach you a little bit about Tantric Buddhism and what that means to me. It means no inhibitions at all. But that depends upon a total commitment to meditation, to development of the mind, to development of the career, to development of a realistic life. It doesn't mean running away.